By the end of this video, you will know about the third personal pronoun in Greek. Hi, Rob McIver here. Let's think about personal pronouns in English as well as in New Testament Greek. Well, you're going to ask me, Rob, what's a pronoun? Well, the Webster's Dictionary defines a pronoun like this. A word that can assume the functions of and be used in place of a noun. Pro instead of noun makes sense. In English, the third person pronoun is he, she or it. In Greek, it is autos, or te, or to. And you'll see that I've mentioned several possible meanings here. It is used mostly where we would want to translate it with either he, she, or it. Sometimes it's used in a way that we would translate himself, herself, itself. That's when things are being emphasized. And sometimes we're going to use the English translation same. Not often, but you need to know all these possible meanings because you're going to meet it sometime. Now, here's a little fun fact. Until I did this table, I wasn't aware that English had cases very much like Greek. OK, most nouns in English don't change depending on whether they're the subject or the direct object. But that's not true for the English personal pronoun. He sees her. She sees him, okay? He or she is the subject of the verb, nominative if you like. Her and him is the direct object of the verb, accusative. Here's a little task. So either on paper or in your mind, why don't you try filling out this table for yourself, just for some fun. Uh, you might need to pause the video while you do it and then come back and see what I've done. Although the next slide is going to give you a bit of a help if you're still not certain what to do. So I've now begun to fill out this table for you. He sees. She sees him, right? So that's he and him. His book. And he says to him. So that is how we get the equivalent of the nominative, accusative, genitive and dative singulars. OK, and the feminine is she and the neuter is it. Again, why don't you try filling out the rest? Pause the video because next I'm going to show it all filled out. So here it is. The English personal pronoun has the equivalent of nominatives, accusative, genitive and dative forms for masculine, feminine and neuter in singular and plural. Hey, you didn't know you knew that, did you? That's just something that you learnt naturally as you learnt English. I'm sure Greek children learn their third person pronouns the same way, but for us, uh, we're going to use a shortcut of looking at a declension. So here is autos, or te, or ta, written out. And the news is good. If you look at the first column, it goes autos, or ton, or tu, or to. Does that ring a bell? Well, it should. They're the very same endings used on logos, logos, legon, legu, lego, etc. The second column is just a set of standard feminine endings. We used gay, gain, gays, gay, guy, gas, going, guys, right? So again, those are the endings that are used on the feminine third person pronoun. Where it is different is with the neuter. So the neuter nominative and accusative is ota, ota, and in the plural it is ota, ota. Uh, by the way, I'm sure you're watching this video just out of the love of Greek, but just in case you're preparing for Greek exams, I often find this a good question to ask because it tests whether students know the standard endings of the masculine second declension noun and the feminine first declension noun, and it's got a couple of interesting bits there that only the really good students will get. So most students will get a good mark, but 100% will belong to those that have studied a bit harder. The third person pronoun is used a great deal on the New Testament, and I've just plucked some examples to show you. The first one is a verse found in John chapter 4. Kai epistusen autos kai heorkia or tu. And if I was translating this as a first year Greek student, I would say, and he believed, he and his household. But then, if I was thinking about the possible meanings of the word autos that we met earlier, 
uh, I might say, well, look, this might mean, and he believed himself in his household. Now that we've got that background, you'll appreciate fully the new RSV translation. So he himself believed along with his whole household. One of the S, they are giving us the meaning of the words, aren't they, rather than the literal translation. But it is a very sophisticated and good rendering of that phrase. I'm impressed. A more straightforward example. Autos est in Elias. He is Elijah. The next one's kind of interesting. Autos gar Dawid legai in Biblio Samon. All right, so we have two subjects essentially. We've got nominative autos and Dawid. So they're both subjects of the verb. And we would translate this as for David himself says in the Psalms. Uh, autos is used to emphasize, stress David, David himself. And similarly, autos Dawid legai or ton curion. David himself calls him Lord. So this usage isn't as frequent as the first examples where it is just he or she or it, but it occurs often enough for us to know about it. Now, all the previous examples were in the nominative case. Here are some examples that use other cases. Huriskai or tus. He finds them. Legai pros or ton. He says to him. Now, I had a bit of a double think here. This almost sounds like a indirect object. It's how we would say an indirect object in English, and it's with a verb of saying to boot. But you'll notice that John 4 has used a preposition pros plus the accusative case or ton. Tain doxan or two. Well, the tain doxan is because this is the direct object of something. But for our purposes, we're interested in the or two, his glory. Tain Adelphane or Tace, her sister. Legai or to. Well, here we have a legitimate indirect object. It's with a verb of saying. And remember, indirect objects are most commonly found with verbs of saying and giving. Legai or to. He says to him, date of case, flags, indirect object. Legai or tois, he says to them. Doxa or te esten, it is her glory. Well, actually, this is a little bit idiomatic in Greek, isn't it? Literally, it reads, doxa to her is. We understand the meaning. In English, we would say her glory is. And just to keep you on the toes, maturo or tois hoti. He bears witness about something to them, an indirect object. Date of case on a third person pronoun. Now, if you're looking for an exercise so that you can practice the use of the third person pronoun, might I recommend the exercise in chapter 12 of my book, Beginning New Testament Greek Made Easier. This video is one of a series of videos on various aspects of the grammar and syntax of the Greek in the New Testament. You can most easily find these videos by either subscribing to my YouTube channel at NT Greek Made Easier or by following me on x.com at Rob McIver 2024. And hey, if you found this video useful, why not either click on the like or heart below? Thank you.